Hey everyone, welcome to another Throwback Superstar Glam Thursday. So today we're going to be talking about the managers of the WWE. We're going all the way back to the 80s first with the Doctor of Style, Slick. Now with the name the Doctor of Style, you know he is styling and profiling and he was. He is just as his name was. He was Slick. He always had some sort of a suit, always dressed to the nines. I love this outfit especially because I like the combination of red, black, and white. The Doctor of Style. Next, we have the first lady of the WWE. It's Miss Elizabeth. I really like how she always had some sort of glitz to her. Something that was just shimmering off the lights. And you had to if you were standing next to the Macho Man Randy Savage. She couldn't outdo him with the outfits, but she tried. Those earrings are something a drag queen would envy. She always was dripping in some sort of diamonds or rubies and the gloves. She was just so prim and proper. Next is Brother Love, and yet he's he's blushing. He was always blushing. This is probably the only man I know of that could pull off a completely white suit all year round with no regrets. Next is Mr. Fuji. I always loved the bowl hats. Mr. Fuji was one of my favorite managers of the WWE. Um, for a while there, he was a wrestler, and then he turned to a manager, and he was always suited up. With the cane, and he needed the cane to walk. He definitely did not use it against anybody. Next is the Grand Wizard of Wrestling. The Grand Wizard always had some wacky tacky fashion. Uh, as you can see, everything is mismatched, but he was he was working it somehow. He was definitely the earliest fashion plate of the of the WWE. Speaking of fashion plates, we have Classy Freddie Blassie, and he knew he was a fashion icon, and he was not afraid to say it. Uh, always in something glittery, kind of like he stole Miss Elizabeth's clothes and then altered them for his jackets. Um, and as just as his name, he was Classy. Next is Jimmy Hart. Jimmy Hart had some sort of a print on all the time, and it was always themed. He would like print with his wrestlers. He would print with uh, the state he was in, the country he was in, Jimmy was different, but he had a very tasteful yet tacky look to him. And the megaphone, we have Paul Bearer. I liked Paul Bearer's suits. Uh, the only thing I didn't, it, it always bugged me, just wear a long sleeve jacket and with no long sleeves underneath. It just looked really weird to me. Um, but he was just as creepy as he was fascinating. I actually went as Paul Bear for Halloween one year. Next, we have Bobby the Brain Heenan. Now, Bobby, sometimes he would dress a little bit down, and then other times he was outrageous, as you can see from this outfit. He is competing with the other glittery managers of yesteryear as the glittery tie. He was always like that. I, I think, you know, he I just always had to have something bedazzled. And, of course, the brains to go along with it. We're moving into the 90s with this woman. I loved Deborah, the former WWE Women's Champion. Uh, I liked how she did business suits, but made sure you were definitely looking at her eyes. Her eyes were the main focus, definitely. But she was gorgeous and had the sweetest voice. The most awful cookies, I hear, but... Deborah is definitely a fashion icon in wrestling in her own. Now these two, I'm wondering, like, what? They're the same person, duh. So first I'm going to talk about Marlena. Uh, Marlena was always in gold. And she didn't talk a lot. Uh, she just let the, the outfits speak for themselves. Uh, Marlena, Terry, Alexandra York, whatever you'd like to call her was one of my favorites and still is one of my favorites. Uh, she always had those beautiful gowns and this petite little frame to fit them. And of course, the bombastic hair. I'm going to slide right into Alexandra York. Still had the big hair too. And I like the floral prints that she wore. And I don't know what she was carrying. It looks like a calculator or a typewriter. I don't know. Terry, what is it? Please. <laughs> I was born in 91. I don't know what it was. I mean, I was born in 2000. I don't know what it was. So another manager of the 90s, Jim Cornette. 
uh, Jim had a fashion all on his own. Uh, kind of like a toned down Grand Wizard of Wrestling. He always had mismatched. And right here you can see the pink and the purple. And then the tennis racket to go along. Thank goodness Jim was a good talker. I'll just say that. <laughs> From the 80s, we have Captain Lou Albano. Uh, many, many times we saw him with himself on the shirt. And then some sort of open bowling shirts, which had some off-the-wall print on them. I was always fascinated by the rubber bands. Those are, they're, they're different. He was, he was, well, he hung with Cindy Lauper. So they had their own style going on. Huge props to Captain Lou. Love him dearly. Now, this is one of my personal favorites, Sapphire, the sweet Sapphire. She always ran down to the ring with Dusty Rhodes in like 89 to 90. The only woman on earth who can make polka dots look cool AF. Sapphire was an amazing person. Um, I've heard a lot about her just reading or watching documentaries and something I really like that you can like barely know, she's wearing black nail polish. A lady in the 90s wearing black nail polish and the polka dots and spandex. You have got to love Sapphire, no matter what. Here we have Sir Oliver Humperdinck. Um, yeah, kind of another Grand Wizard of Wrestling case. He was, he was mismatching in his own style. Um, the, the cane certainly worked in his favor. He was an odd character in himself, but the style was still there. Next up, we have Tennessee Lee. He, he didn't make it on Dallas, but, uh, he was definitely the J.R. Ewing of WWE, but still dressed so prim and proper in his, uh, his white attire, I'm pretty sure he got that a little dusty every once in a while. Last, does anyone remember this little lady? I'm sorry, I have to talk about that. that is Shaniqua. She was the manager of the Basham Brothers in the early 2000s. And she was scary. I, I think she was like over six foot and had heels to make herself taller. She always carried the whip. She wouldn't, no joke. Shaniqua had her own style, and I ain't disputing that style because I'm not willing to get my butt kicked. <laughs> so that has been the manager fashions of WWE yesteryear. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have more to come, so stay tuned.